name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we have arrived at the fifth and final Sunday of Great Lent. So we're only a week from Palm Sunday. And every year on the fifth Sunday, we remember a very special saint in the life of our church, St. Mary of Egypt. And we remember different saints at different times of the year for a number of reasons, and we're remembering St. Mary today and remembering the lesson of her life. And the main lesson of her life is that of repentance. It's the idea that no, how, no matter how far we turn our lives away from God, we're never too far gone. We're never too far away. We can always come back. And that happens a lot to us because we get into habits and routines and we sort of start thinking, well, I haven't been doing what I'm supposed to do. We don't feel comfortable coming back. We worry what people will think. We worry that we've been gone too long. There are sure, I'm sure many people watching at home right now, not coming to church, watching us online thinking, I don't know how to come back. And that's a difficulty because if you read the life of St. Mary, you see you're never too far gone. And I would encourage you to go online and read the whole life in its entirety. It's pretty long, the life of St. Mary. To give you just an idea of it, she's living the most sinful life you can imagine. Just imagine a person living the most sinful life that they can. But something is drawing her to venerate the Holy Cross, and so she tries to go into the church to venerate, and there's an invis invisible force keeping her from entering in. She can't make it into the church. And she realizes that it's her unclean life. And she has a vision and is told by the Virgin Mary that if she goes beyond the Jordan River, she will find rest if she repents. And so she takes a little bit of bread with her and she crosses over the river. She goes out into the desert, into the wilderness, and she lives there. She lives there for decades, almost 50 years, until a priest monk who is looking for a spiritual elder, a spiritual guide, happens to be going through the desert. He's at a local monastery and the practice of that local monastery at the beginning of Lent is for them to open their doors and for all of the monks to go into the desert. Imagine that. They spend all 40 days in the desert with no food or drink. And then they come back for Holy Week. And so he's out in the desert. His name is Zosimas. And he's wandering around looking for a spiritual guide, looking for an elder. And he sees this figure in the distance moving away from him. And he gets closer and he realizes it's an old woman, naked and burnt by the sun with hair white as snow. And he leaves his robe for her and she puts the robe on. So when you see an icon of St. Mary, you see her covered in a black robe, partially. You see her darkened and blackened by the sun, skin and bones with white hair. And she calls him by name. And she tells him the story of her life. And they pray together. And he realizes she's a saintly person. Even though she's had no education, she's quoting the scripture. She's quoting the Bible. She knows the writings of the church. And so they pray together, and he's on his hands and knees with his face to the ground praying. And he thinks that her prayers have gotten a little bit long. Imagine how long the prayers are for a priest monk who's out in the desert thinking the prayers are too long. And he looks up and he sees her levitating about a forearm's distance off the ground. And that's why in the end of the Orthros, we read and sang those beautiful hymns that talked about her levitating off the ground. And so she requests of him, because he's a priest monk, to come back the following year during Lent and give her communion, because she hasn't received Holy Communion in so long. And he comes back. She's able to travel across the Jordan River. She walks literally on the water. And she reposes in the place he comes back the following year and sees her body there. She died right after he communed her, and she's been laying there out in the desert with the elements as if it was a day completely without corruption. And he's trying to bury the body, and a lion comes and helps him dig a hole to bury her body in. And so we recount the life of St. Mary, this person who's living the most unclean life, the most sinful life, furthest away from God, ends up levitating off the ground, walking on water, being clairvoyant, performing miracles, living out in the wilderness, 
Imagine what kind of life that is. To live out in the desert amongst wild animals with no shelter and no food, with lions and hyenas and all sorts of predators around you, and living day after day, year after year, decade after decade, having complete faith and trust in God. And so I think the lesson and the moral for us, there's a hundred different morals for us, but part of them is to know that we can turn our life toward God. Our difficulty, for those of us that are here, we think that our life is with God. And we think, well, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, which is beautiful, and we make the effort, and we try. But when we think about St. Mary, we should think, wow, look what is possible. Look what I'm capable of doing. And am I pushing myself even a little bit to try to do more? Because if this woman lives the most sinful life you can imagine and she ends up levitating off the ground, what's my excuse? I'm trying to live a clean life and I'm nowhere near levitating. What am I doing wrong? I'm not pushing myself a little bit, just a little bit, to have the trust in God to come to my senses to realize I can be closer to Him. And I want to be closer to Him. Why is that? Because I love Him. If I love Him, really love Him, because He's a person, He's not an idea, He's not an ideology, He's not a belief system, He's a person. And I love Him because He saves me, because He created me, because He gives me life, because He dies for me because he conquers death for me. If I love him, I want to get closer. I want to get closer to him. And if I get closer to him, by default, all of the other things will happen in my life that need to be. So we start with that fun one fundamental idea. Do we love God? Do we trust him? Do we have faith in him? Do we try to get closer to him? And think about what is possible. And think about what we are trying to aspire to in the spiritual life, in our relationship with Christ. What is the goal? Is the goal for me to be a good person? Is the goal for me to be comfortable where I'm at? What is the goal of the spiritual life? What am I trying to achieve? The goal for us is to be on the wall. The goal for us is to be up there with them. It's to be like St. Mary. The ultimate goal is not just to be a little better or good or nice or kind. The goal is to be Christ-like. It's to be perfect. That's the bar we have to set for ourselves. Because if we set the bar way down here, we will achieve way down here. If we set the bar a little bit higher, we will start to grow and move a little closer to where Christ is. And that's our goal. The goal of the spiritual life is to become like Christ, to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. That's what we're trying to do. And the good news is we can do it. And if you don't believe it, just look at St. Mary of Egypt. It's possible for anyone at any time to do it. And so that's what I'm trying to do. These last few weeks that we have, one week and then Holy Week, it's not too late. We have to set the goal for ourselves to push ourselves a little bit. And when I say push yourself and raise the bar, I mean try to pray. Try to spend time with God. A few minutes here or there. Try to open the Bible and read it. Listen to His Word. A few minutes here or there. Try to fast as much as you can. Try to come to church. It's not pushing ourselves so much that we're going to pass out and die. It's just pushing ourselves a little bit closer, wanting a little more for ourselves. Don't be content with where you are. Always want to be a little closer to Him. There's still a week left. For those of us that haven't been fasting at all, or we started strong and we stopped, start again. Every day, we start again. And I mentioned the monasteries there and the, the spiritual elders. You know, I asked a, a monk at a monastery what time. I said, what, what do you do in the monastery? And whenever you ask an elder in a monastery, they should say the same thing. We fall and get up again. 
We fall and get up again. We fall and get up again. And every day we've accomplished nothing and we start fresh the next day. And that's how it should be for us. Clean start. We have a week left. If you haven't fasted, fast. If you've been fasting, you're almost there. Keep going. If you haven't been praying the way you wanted, start tonight. Start tomorrow morning. If you haven't been reading the Bible, crack it open, blow the dust off of it, and read a little bit. One sentence, one verse of a gospel, one little bit. You'll be amazed at what it can do. That's pushing yourself a little bit and saying, if St. Mary can do it, if a person that lived that life can levitate and walk on water, well, why can't I be a little bit closer to God? Why don't I feel the love of Christ in my heart? every day. Why don't I feel the joy of Christ in my life? I should. I'm going to try. And that's what the spiritual life is. Trying every day to get closer and closer to Him so that now as we have a little bit of time left, two weeks, before we celebrate His passion, His crucifixion, His resurrection, we get closer and closer to Him and we do that each and every day. Amen.